everyone. I wanted to make you a third PowerPoint presentation for this week, and it's a really short one. It's just on the concept of fiduciary duty, because I think it's a really important concept as it's discussed in the chapters from this week also, but it's really important to start talking about this concept of something called a fiduciary duty when we're talking about partners in a partnership members of a limited liability company. And we're also going to continue talking about fiduciary duty later this semester, I think next week, when we talk about officers and directors. So this word duty should already look familiar to you because we've talked about duty of care in the Coon versus Pub Zone. We even talked about duty of care in your exam on the government unit when I asked you to consider about the liability, the potential liability of the Mandalay Bay Hotel. What kind of duties do businesses owe to their customers? What kind of duties do businesses own to their employees? This concept of duty, this word duty, is a word that means legal obligation in the law. It's the idea that people who agree to be in an enterprise together or businesses to customers owe obligations to one another. But here, we're not just going to talk about the concept of duty that a business might owe a customer, like we saw in Kuhn versus PubZone. We're going to take the concept further and talk about the concept of a fiduciary. A fiduciary duty means something different. It's a higher level of duty, and it means that utmost level of good faith that individuals owe one another. It's higher than the level of duty of care owed from a business to its customers. It's that highest level of good faith. And where do we see this? We see this in, oh, I have to fix this. Uh, there we go. Now you can see it. We, fix, we can see the duty of care in, sorry, I cut off the video for a second just so I could fix the screen so you could see it. So the concept of duty, as I was just saying, it's a legal obligation, but it's that highest level of legal obligation. So it's that utmost level of good faith. So where do we see it in the business context here? We see that partners in a partnership owe each other that fiduciary duty. And on this week's discussion board, I'm going to have you talk about this concept of owing each other fiduciary duties and what that means, and also what it means when one of the partners in a partnership doesn't live up to that obligation. Again, we'll also see this as we go forward that members of a limited liability company also owe each other fiduciary duties, and then we'll talk about it with officers and directors as well. But I just wanted to give you a quick overview in this PowerPoint. So the fiduciary duty involves two levels. We can talk about both a duty of care and a duty of loyalty. So the duty of care is means that partners in a partnership owe each other an obligation not to act with gross negligence. Gross negligence is like negligence plus. It's usually considered like recklessness, like a high level of intentionally disregarding known risks. Also, partners in a, in, that are fiduciaries owe each other an obligation not to act intentionally with bad faith. So we talk about both a duty of care to each other, but we also talk about a concept called duty of loyalty. And this gets really interesting between partners in a partnership and members of a limited liability company. I just gave you some bullet points here, and you can see each concept discussed more fully in your book, but I wanted to give you some highlights here. Duty of care, again, think about that high level of good faith. Duty of care means don't cheat on your partner. And I don't just mean don't cheat and take money from the company that belongs to the company. I mean, that, that's just theft. What we mean is don't compete with your partner. So a good example would be if I entered into a landscaping business with you know, my friend Bob, and we have a landscaping business together and we are partners in a partnership. I cannot go ahead and start a competing landscaping business with Jane over here, nor can I run my own side landscaping business that competes with the landscaping businesses that I have with Bob. That would be going into competition with my own partnership, and that violates fiduciary duty, and we call that a breach of the fiduciary duty, that is not living up to that high level of obligation. So duty of loyalty, step number one that's really important is do not compete with your partner and also do not compete with the partnership. What about a conflict of interest? I'm sure you guys have heard that word before. It's when you can't make an unbiased decision because you might have a conflict with the outcome. The same thing is true with partners. 
So that's the one of the examples that um, I won't go too far into this one because you'll read the case in your book as part of the discussion board, but that case involved a conflict of interest. So I'll leave that for us to discuss on the board about a good example about how not to get into a conflict of interest with your own partnership. What about using partnership business property for yourself or stealing a business opportunity? These are also ways in which a partner could cheat his partner and violate that duty of loyalty and therefore violate that fiduciary duty. A really good example of stealing the business opportunity would go like this. Let's say I'm with Bob and we have our landscaping business and we decide to call it Bedford Landscaping. And that's what we do. If I'm just out for dinner one night and I run into an old friend of mine and she happens to mention that they're looking for a new landscaper to come landscape, you know, multiple properties that they own and she's going to pay very well. And I think to myself, well, why don't I just do it myself? I won't tell Bob about it because then I'm going to have to share the profits with Bob. Remember, partners in a partnership share profits. And I don't want to share partners with this profit with Bob. And in fact, I'm the one that learned of the business opportunity, not Bob. My friend brought it to me. But if I do that, right, I'm not being fair. I'm not acting in good faith to Bob. So I can't do that. I can't steal from myself the business opportunity that was presented to me as part of the partnership. I have to bring that business opportunity to Bob and to our partnership. That's what we mean by acting in good faith. Now, you might be wondering, what if Bob said to me, go ahead and take that business opportunity for yourself? Well, he can certainly do that. And if he did that and I went and landscaped all of those businesses and earned the money myself, that would be fine because I was acting in good faith by bringing it to my partner in the first place and letting my partner say, no, it's okay, you take it for yourself. The cheating part, the breach of fiduciary duty part is when I didn't even tell him. You can see where this is a problem. Now you might be thinking to yourself too, what about the American way? What about competition? What about these business opportunities? And that's all true, except for the fact that the law said, you know what, wait a second, you guys decided to become partners. And when you become partners, you don't just decide to share profits and losses. You don't just decide to make business decisions together. You now have this layer of fiduciary duty over each other. You're not just two random business people. You decided to join forces. And when you did, the law imposes this fiduciary obligation on you. So you can't just walk away from it. To do that, you'd have to end the partnership. And one more little caveat there, if a business opportunity came to you while you were partners and you thought, well, I'll just end the partnership and not even tell my partner, don't do that either. Because the business opportunity came to you during the life of the partnership, that fiduciary duty holds strong. So I just want to spend a few minutes introducing this concept of fiduciary duty to you, and I look forward to discussing it on the discussion board.